Welcome to my video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to repair a Honda HRS 216. Now the problem that we're having today is it is not starting. Uh, no matter how hard you pull the pull rope, no matter how many times, it just won't start. Uh, this is actually a lawnmower from a co-worker that they uh, brought to me to uh, diagnose and repair. And I'm going to show you guys the steps to diagnosing this machine. Now, Honda GCV 160s have a very easy toolless air filter. So we're going to remove that. The air filter actually looks fairly clean. Uh, it does not need a replacement at this time. But we're going to remove the air filter and in here is going to be uh, your intake. And that's going to lead to the Venturi and the carburetor. Now we're going to make sure our choke is off because we want it to be wide open for this. And all I'm going to do is just spray a little bit of a flammable fluid into the carburetor. Now we're going to put our air filter housing and air filter back onto the machine. And we'll give it a pull. As you can see, the machine started and died. This tells me that the ignition system, uh, including the spark plug, is indeed operating functional. And uh, that our problem is actually in our carburation system. So I'll just have a fuel on off valve, and you wanna make sure that this is in the on position, and this one is. If you wanted to turn it off, you just turn it upright like that. And we're gonna leave that off for now, as we are going to be taking apart the carburetor. So with the lawnmower up here, we're going to remove our air filter and housing as we did before. We're going to want to remove these three 10 millimeter bolts. So now that you have your three bolts out, uh, the housing is going to be held on just by a uh, PCV line, which can be popped off at the back here so by using a screwdriver loosen it and there is the port that I was talking about and this is the hose here now your carburetor is going to have a few linkages hooked up to your choke and your throttle they can be a bit intimidating at first just because everything does look somewhat complicated here uh, but I promise that they're not it's fairly easy um, most of these uh, fittings and uh, linkages here just have an S bend pattern on them and they're quite simple to get off. Uh, the carburetor will tilt to the way that you need it and you can simply bend this little shield out of the way and you'll be able to disconnect your choke linkage just like that as you can see it is an S linkage. I like to tuck that over just like this on this model so that the linkage cannot fall off from the other side. And it's actually going to be the same style of linkage on your throttle. So you're just going to want to tilt the carburetor again and uh, push back on the linkage and it will pop out of its hole. So now that you have your linkages disconnected, the last thing that you're going to want to do is disconnect the fuel line here. Uh, and this can be done just by using a flathead screwdriver like so and getting in between the uh, carburetor. Alright, so now we have our fuel line disconnected, our carburetor is out of the machine. And uh, I'll go ahead and give you guys instructions on how to clean this unit. So the portion of the carburetor that, that typically gets uh, dirty and gummed up is in the bottom here. This is known as the bowl, and inside the bowl is a float. In the center of all this is what is uh, called an emulsions tube, and there is uh, very tiny holes in the emulsions tube, uh, which are called jets. And uh, these jets actually end up getting plugged up uh, when regular fuel is used in the lawnmower because regular fuel contains 15% uh, sometimes 10% ethanol and uh, ethanol absorbs water and moisture and over the winter time it tends to be a very moist uh, environment uh, although we don't typically see it as being moist uh, it is actually uh, quite damp in the winter time with the snow uh, rain whatever you have and it'll actually uh, cause the fuel to turn into like a gel substance where it has absorbed moisture. So we'll get this uh, carburetor bowl off here 
and uh, we'll see if uh, the carburetor is indeed gelled up. Uh, typically a small amount of uh, gelling is enough to cause this condition. Alright, so the bowl is off the carburetor here, it just pulls off. You can notice uh, a few uh, small deposits there. <clears throat> you can just separate that plate there from the carburetor. Uh, here's your pin, so we're going to take that off. Underneath it there will be an, a needle. It slides onto the float, just like so in that little crevice there. So set that to the side. There's almost like a film on everything in the carburetor. So to get our emulsions tube out now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a narrow flathead screwdriver and just push it into the center here. And in there is going to be your main jet. Alright, so here is our emulsions tube, and as I said previously, you can see there is a ton of tiny little inlets and outlets on the emulsions tube. Uh, our main jet is actually plugged, there's a hole in the center here, uh, which should be able to feed fuel through, and it is plugged. So I'm guessing that is going to be the cause of our problem here. There's some dirt here that has actually came out of the carburetor. You can see it also along uh, where the float meets uh, the carburetor. And this does not have a screen on the inlet, uh, but we'll go ahead and clean the carburetor. So I'm just going to spray a little bit of uh, cleaner into the inlet here and ensure that that is actually clear and free of debris, which it is. I'm going to spray a little bit in the top of the carburetor and allow that to sit. Now the main jet is plugged, we'll see if we can get anything to come through here. No, it is plugged. So I'll show you guys how I typically clear those out. So this is what you're going to need uh, to clean out the jets on the carburetor. I'm using the small size available which uh, actually has a 74th digit here and uh, it is point zero. Uh, 225 size. Sorry, I have the camera upside down here. And what you're going to want to do is you're just going to take your jet and your small tiny drill bit here, and you'll be able to actually feed the drill bit through the jet like so. Let's give it a quick little twirl, whatever, and that will actually clean everything out from the jet. And you can do the same thing with the emulsions tube here. So now what I typically do is I just take the jet here and I give it a quick little spray with some compressed air through the center and we'll do the same with the emulsions tube just to ensure that all the passageways are clear you can actually see right through those tiny holes now alright so the carburetor is now clean we're gonna take our emulsions tube and push that back in as well as our main jet and we're just going to tighten that in with our screwdriver here. Now we're going to install our float with the needle in the float. And we're just going to drop it into the carburetor. Take our pin here and install that through the uh, hinge for the float. And now we're going to install the carburetor bowl and the nut. So now we're going to start by installing our linkages back onto the carburetor. We're going to start with installing the throttle linkage. Now we'll install our choke linkage. Alright, so now that we have our linkages installed, we're going to connect our fuel line here. And we're going to take our cover with our two long bolts. And we're just going to run it through the carburetor and uh, the this front portion of the gasket just to hold the carburetor up and we'll take this uh, manifold here and we'll just slide it behind the carburetor and we'll get it into position using our two 
bolts. It's very simple. And now we can tighten this cover down. Now, before we tighten this down, you can just reach behind here and connect the hose. <laughs> I have it now connected. I can do it blindly because I've done so many of them, but uh, you can actually see it uh, by looking at the right side here. If you uh, position your head in a way, you'll be able to see the uh, line and you'll be able to connect it just using your hands. It's not as bad to actually connect it as it is to uh, take it, taking it off. And we're just going to tighten up our two bolts here. These don't need to be like Hercules tight, just snug. We do have gaskets. And we're going to tighten up our last uh, golden bolt here. And we can now install our air filter and the air filter cover. And our fuel is turned on now. So we'll get this lawnmower off of the back of the truck and uh, we'll put it on the ground and see if she starts. Alright, so I'll now give the machine a pull, put the choke all the way on. I did have to do a slight adjustment on the choke cable as it wasn't operating all the way uh, to fully close the choke. So we'll give it a pull and see what happens. There you have it. That's all it takes to get your Honda HRS 216 back up and running again. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. See ya.